And while most visitors to Venice enjoy Piazza San Marco and the Doge's Palace from Terra Ferma, my favorite view is actually from the water because the Grand Canal actually begins here at the Piazza San Marco and then snakes its way through about four kilometers or two and a half miles all the way up to the train station at the other end. So let's take a quick ride over the most beautiful street in all of Venice, the Grand Canal. And on one side of the Grand Canal, we have the island of San Giorgio and a church by the same name. That was designed by the great Renaissance architect Andrea Palladio. And in fact, if you're in Venice, I recommend going up to the top of that bell tower and enjoying the spectacular view of the Piazza San Marco just across the way. The Grand Canal follows the course of an ancient riverbed. It's only about five meters deep. And the first structure you come across here is the Customs House, which actually replaced the Rialto, which for centuries was the place where large galleys and merchant vessels would stop to have their cargo inspected, to be sure, of course, that they were paying the appropriate duties. The next structure we come across is one of the most celebrated in all of Venice, and it is the Church of Santa Maria della Salute, known simply as the Salute. Built in the seventh century, designed by an architect named Longena, it was actually constructed in thanks to the Virgin Mary for having helped Venice survive a particularly difficult bout of plague. And considered to build that church, over one million pylons were driven into the ground to simply lay its foundations. The Grand Canal is lined with over 170 buildings, many of which belong to the prominent families of Venice, including the Palazzo Salviati that you see there behind me which is the headquarters of the glass factory. And in fact, you can see that beautiful glass mosaic on the exterior of the building. The names of the owners of these palazzo was a veritable roll call of Venetian aristocracy, even though there wasn't a true aristocracy here. In fact, that building that you see behind me is the Ca or Casa Cornaro di Ca Grande, or the big house. It was designed in the 16th century by the Renaissance architect San Sovino and one of the largest palaces on the Grand Canal. And while most people come to Venice to see Renaissance art, one of my absolute favorite places is the Peggy Guggenheim Museum, which is located right there in the unfinished Palazzo Venier dei Leoni. It was actually begun in 1749 and never completed and eventually purchased by Peggy and transformed into this extraordinary collection of modern art here in the city of Venice. Or the 16th century Palazzo Barbarigo that you see there behind me with those 19th century mosaics marking two momentous occasions in the history of Venice. The one on the right showing the visit of Holy Roman Emperor Charles V to Titian's studio here in Venice. And the mosaic on the left showing the visit of King Henry III of France to the glass factory in Murano. And that bridge that you see behind me is the Academia Bridge. It was actually the second bridge ever built over the Grand Canal takes its name from the museum located on the other bank. And consider that it was only constructed in 1932 to replace a 19th century cast iron bridge that had been built under Austrian rule, but was so low that it hindered traffic here on the Grand Canal and eventually had to be replaced. Consider that that bridge was supposed to be temporary, but the Venetians liked it so much that they made it permanent. And that building that you see behind me is the Ca Rezzonico, a Rococo gem here in the heart of Venice, which sits directly across from one of the most famous of the palazzi here in the city, which is the Palazzo Grassi. Built in the late 18th century, it was the last of the great palazzi built before the fall of the Venetian Republic. It is today the venue for most of the major exhibitions that take place here in Venice. And you'll, of course, notice that bridge that we're approaching, the most celebrated in the entire city of Venice, the Rialto Bridge, which we actually discuss at length in another episode of Rocky's Italy. 
But the structure today is at the very heart of the Grand Canal. In fact, this is the narrowest point and where the two banks are the highest. So it was actually the most convenient place to build a bridge going all the way back into the Middle Ages. In fact, that name Rialto comes from the Italian Riva Alto or High Bank. And that 16th century structure that you see today, full of shops, which were once commercial shops, today instead selling mainly tourist goods. The building that you see coming up on the right-hand side is the Fondaco dei Tedeschi, which was actually the headquarters for the German population that was living here in Venice in the 16th century. Not only did they live in the Fondaco, it was their warehouse as well. Now, the original structure burned down and was rebuilt in the 16th century and actually had frescoes on the outside that were executed by Titian and by Giorgione. Today, the structure is actually used as a sort of high-end shopping mall that you can actually visit on the inside, but the outside of the structure retains its original Renaissance appearance. And those arches that you see there behind me open up into the Rialto market, the Mercato del Rialto. It's one of my favorite places to visit, particularly in the morning, because it is still an active fish and produce market, where again, those 50,000 Venetians who continue to live here on the island go to purchase their food. The most famous of all the family palaces on the Grand Canal is probably the one that you see there behind me. It is the Ca d'Oro, literally the Golden House. It was commissioned in 1420 by a man named Marino Contarini to in fact be the most lavish and extraordinary palace on the entire Grand Canal. Now the structure is typically Venetian in its asymmetrical arrangement. It's made of Istrian stone, but they treated that stone with oil and white lead to actually make it look like marble. But that Cadoro, that golden house name that it had, because originally much of the stone was gilded in gold, giving the appearance, of course, that it was made of that particular substance, showing off the wealth of its owner. And showing off wealth was something that the Venetians did better than anyone else. And like all the other foreign national communities here in Venice, the Turks were also assigned a fondaco, which is the building that you see behind me, a sort of combination between dormitory and warehouse so that they could be under the surveillance and under the close eye, of course, of Venetian authorities. Because remember, the Venetians thought that anyone not Venetian was potentially a spy. And so the building that you see was originally constructed in the 13th century, but then in the 17th century transformed into the Turk fondaco. Now remember, Venice was perpetually at war with the Ottoman Empire, but no one ever said you can't do business with the enemy, especially if there was money to be made. And consider that this structure was used by that Turkish community well into the 19th century. Today, of course, it is the home to the Natural History Museum of Venice instead. And so sadly, my journey comes to an end. I've arrived here at the Santa Lucia train station. And of course, I've forgotten our most important monument today. Oh, Captain, my captain, the great Jacopo hello, and his boat, hello guys. Colombina. And if you're ever in need of a trustworthy boat and a captain, this is your guy. This is your boat here in Venice. Ciao a tutti. Okay.